Festo's latest bio-inspired creations are a robo-bat and rolling robo-spider. Festo's flashy biomimetic robots are more or less glorified tech demos, but that doesn't mean they aren't cool. Its latest units moved an imitation of two unusual animals, a tumbling spider and a flying fox. The bionic wheel bit, when walking, isn't anything we haven't seen before. Hexapital locomotion has been achieved by countless roboticists. One recent project even attempted to capture the spontaneity of an insect's gait. Westworld's hosts just took over HBO to reveal a new trailer is coming tomorrow. The second season of HBO's Westworld will premiere on April 22, which means it's time for a new trailer in this afternoon, the network announced one was coming in an unorthodox fashion. At 8 p.m. Eastern Time 5 p.m. PT, the feeds for all HBO and Cinemax channels glitched out simultaneously, airing a brief teaser clip with footage from the upcoming episodes, while promising that the full trailer will arrive on Thursday, March 29, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time 8 a.m. PT. The first season of Westworld ended with the hosts essentially staging a robot uprising with the help of the late doctor. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang clarifies Uber is not using its drive platform. While Uber makes use of NVIDIA hardware and its own self-driving automotive technology, it does not employ NVIDIA's drive autonomous computing platform, which includes the GPU maker's own real-time sensor fusion, HD mapping and path planning. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang shared this information today during a Q&A session attended by reporters at the company's GPU technology conference in San Jose. Uber develops their own sensing and drive technology. Huang also reiterated comments made during an earlier Q&A that NVIDIA ceased its own testing on public roads comprises only about five or six vehicles in total at any given time, the company out of an abundance of caution and simply because it's good engineering practice to pause and reflect when a new variable is discovered in any engineering problem. Uber's fatal self-driving crash, all the news and updates. On March 18, a 49-year-old woman was struck by a self-driving Uber vehicle in Tempe, Arizona. She was transported to the hospital, where she died. In the aftermath, Uber's self-driving program is hanging on by a thread, while the rest of the industry debates the speed in which these vehicles were being rushed to market. The Las Vegas Strip's first legit esports arena just opened for business. On the south end of the Vegas Strip, a different kind of gaming is taking root. At the Luxor Casino, the Esports Arena Las Vegas just opened its doors, occupying the former home of the Lax Nightclub. At Luxor Hotel and Casino will hold world-class tournaments daily gaming and the 30,000-square-foot space is custom-built to accommodate the flashy, massive events that have come to define the Esports world, including an in-house network TV quality production studio replete with 24 cameras and a two-story LED TV wall. Hewlett Packard Enterprise to move HQ to San Jose. Hewlett Packard Enterprise is moving north from Palo Alto to San Jose. The company will relocate 1,000 employees to a 220,000 square foot space in late 2018. HPE was spun off from Hewlett Packard in 2015 and is focused on servers and storage. Boeing reportedly hit by WannaCry ransomware. Boeing has reportedly been struck in a major way by WannaCry, the ransomware that spread like wildfire last year. The Seattle Times obtained a memo from Mike Vanderwell of the company's commercial airliner division, describing the malware as metastasizing rapidly. WannaCry, you may remember, spread using a Windows exploit leaked from NSA files, demanded a modest sum in Bitcoin to decrypt the victim's files, and was stopped in dramatic fashion by a single person. Investigators confidently, but, as with most attacks like this, circumstantially attributed the attacks to North Korea. Donald Trump's Amazon obsession should worry you. The writing is on the wall. Winter is coming for the world's largest tech companies. According to a report by Axios today, Trump is out for blood, and that blood, reportedly, belongs to Jeff Bezos and Amazon. Trump continually squout about both Amazon and Bezos' tax treatment, later including the Washington Post, which Bezos owns, for good measure, stating the company would have such problems if he were elected president in a February 2016 speech. Facebook might soon let you leave private comments on public posts. For those of you still using Facebook in the wake of the Cambridge Analytica scandal, it's testing a new feature which allows users to start private conversations in the comments section of a Facebook page. 
Users who are part of the test can leave comments on any post on a public page that can only be seen by those who fall within their privacy settings. At the moment, page owners can't see the private comments, though Facebook will implement a tool which will allow them to later. Not only would this give users space to have their conversations without having to start a public discussion, it offers an easier way of engaging your friends with a poster link than currently exists. Tesla is overusing automation in Model 3 final assembly, analysts say. Bernstein analysts Max Warburton and Tony Sakanagi argue Elon Musk is overusing automation, Business Insider reports, and that's why Tesla is unable to scale as fast as it would like. Tesla has tried to hyper-automate final assembly, the report states. Few have seen it, but we know this, Tesla has spent C2x, what a traditional OEM spends per unit on capacity. In addition to automating stamping, paint and welding, the report states, Tesla is also trying to automate the final assembly process, which entails the actual placement of parts into the cars. Review, 2018 Lincoln Navigator. Michigan saw a historic amount of snowfall in 2018. It's snowing as I write this, and it snowed nearly every day since I took delivery of this burgundy 2018 Lincoln Navigator. It's not a sport truck, and it's not high-tech paradise, though it can play the part of both. Uber Freight lead, Lear Ron, has left the company. Lear Ron, Uber's head of freight operations, has left the company, a source familiar with the situation told TechCrunch. We believe it will continue to grow as we use our network and technology to transform the trucking industry. Ron is the co-founder of self-driving truck startup Auto, which sold to Uber in 2016. Auto was at the center of Uber's recently settled lawsuit with Alphabet's Waymo over self-driving car technology. Reverse engineering consciousness is the brain a quantum computer, the human brain is often described as a powerful computer, a metaphor that leads many experts to fear AI could one day become sentient. Our minds, according to some, are actually quantum computers. And, if that's true, today's deep learning techniques will never lead to general artificial intelligence, the singularity, without a serious hardware upgrade. DocuSign unveils IPO filing. DocuSign has unveiled its IPO filing, confirming our scoop from last week. The company had previously filed confidentially, and the timing of the filing revelation implies that DocuSign is hoping to go public in late April. It's raised over $500 million over the past 15 years and has been valued as high as $3 billion. Netflix adds former White House security advisor Susan Rice to its board. Netflix has added a board member with some big political connections, Susan Rice, who worked in the Obama administration as national security advisor and ambassador to the UN. The company's chief marketing officer Leslie Kilgore and entertainment execs Anne Mather and Anne Sweeney are also on the team. Many are using this as an alternative to a traditional cable TV subscription, making Netflix one of the leaders in cord cutting. Hastings says that the company is forecasting $15 billion in revenue for the year. Logitech's new $89 headphones cut the nonsense for pro gamers. Logitech has new headphones aimed directly at the pro gamers and those who aspire to be, and they're refreshingly devoid of superflaws features. Most gaming headsets, including Logitech's past models, use some athletic fabric that promises to be more sweat resistant. It hardly blocks any sound from the outside world and tends to be a little scratchy. Consumer genetic tests may have a lot of false positives. Consumer genetic tests may bring up a lot of false positives, according to a new study that compared results from direct-to-consumer tests to results from clinical laboratories. By looking through their own database, they found that 49 people had been referred to them because of some worrying results from their consumer genetic tests. Still, scientists at Ambury were able to confirm only 60% of the results when they compared the raw data from consumer tests with more thorough genetic tests done by themselves and other clinical laboratories. How a creative think tank in Austin is developing a new generation of interactive storytellers. In the world of immersive entertainment, high-end activations like HBO's Sprawling, a real-world recreation of Westworld or Disney's upcoming Star Wars expansion lands get most of the attention. It was an interactive story experience called Open Mind which played out in hotel rooms, office buildings, and public locations across Austin, Texas, over a period of four days.
Open Mind told the story of a protagonist in this case, me leaping between two parallel dimensions immersive entertainment alternate reality Meow Wolf Deep Dive Austin tasked with stopping a nefarious tech genius from overtaking both worlds with an insidious thought reading technology. We salute the developer who created an Alexa-controlled robot tank to deliver his beer. What's cooler than Amazon's Alexa voice assistant being able to get you a beer? Having it delivered via a toy tank. Software developer Balazs Simon posted his newest project, called Wallabier Tank, to Hackster earlier this week and you'll just have to see the results to believe it. The tank, a remote control toy, is rigged to deliver beer on command, complete with a crane system. That makes it look like your beer is about to be launched like a ballistic missile. Mario Kart and Monopoly together feels wrong. Hasbro today released a Mario Kart edition of Monopoly, complete with Rainbow Road-themed twists on the classic game formula. Let's just say the two franchises don't comfortably dovetail. I'm not sure what brought the combination about, other than Monopoly and Mario Kart are both popular and lucrative.